Hi everyone. Let's take a look at number nine on page 460. Determine the coordinates of the point with the plane with the equation vector r equals to 416 plus s times 11 negative 1 3 plus t times negative 7 2 negative 2 where s and t are elements of real numbers crosses the z-axis step number one when you think about the z-axis what you're really doing is the following you want to set x to be zero you want to set y to be zero and your goal is to solve for z so again, think about the basic concepts. Back in two-dimensional space, when you find the x-intercept, you would set y to be zero, solve for x. Likewise, to find the y-intercept, you would set x to be zero, solve for y. So in this case, in three-dimensional space, when it crosses the z-axis, that means x and y are equal to zero. Now, look what happens. If I go from the given all the way to parametric form, here's what you can do. The first number, 416, the first row becomes the first column, 416 plus 11s minus 1 times s plus 3 times s. Again, I can highlight this. Again, this second part becomes a second column. And if I continue, it will be minus 17 plus 2t and minus 2t. So again, just in case one person is lost, let's highlight this so nobody's left behind. Now again, you should write down s and t are elements of real numbers. Now the key is this. Since you're going to set x and y to be 0, when you go back, this number becomes zero, this number becomes zero. Uh, my goal is to solve for t. So let me talk about the bigger step. So the big picture is this, I solve for t, I solve for s, and I plug it back into here to find z. Now this goes back to grade 10 academic math, and you can solve by elimination, you can solve by substitution, it's really up to you. So I'm just gonna copy this right here. So I'm saying that zero equals to four plus 11s minus 7t. Now, if I look at this second line, what I can do is I can multiply everything by 11. So if I do that, multiply everything by 11, this means 0 times 11 is going to be 0. 1 times 11 is going to be 11. Negative 1s times 11 is going to be 11, or negative 11s. 2t times 11 is going to be 22t. And now look what happens. I can add them. So remember, when the signs are opposite, you can add them. If they're the same, you can subtract them. So what happens is if I subtract or if I add this, 0 plus 0 is going to be 0. 4 plus 11 is going to be 15. This is, of course, nothing. I'm going to leave it blank. Negative 7 plus 22 is going to be positive 15t. Now, if you solve for t, t equals to negative 1. Now, again, you plug it back in and you solve for the corresponding z value. And I realized I forgot to find s first. Let's slow it down a little bit. Now, if I want to solve for s, s equals to, again, you can plug it back to whichever equation you like. So let's say I plug it back into this one right here. So this means 0 equals to 1 minus s plus 2 times negative 1. I can bring negative s to the left. On the right, it's going to be 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. So s equals to negative 1. Now, I can say z, which comes from here, by the way. I hope you're still following the arrows. 6 plus 3 times negative 1 minus 2 times negative 1. Let's make sure nobody is left behind. I'm going to do mental math. If you want to take a calculator, by all means. So that's going to be 6 minus 3 plus 2. That's going to be 3 plus 2. That's 5. Again, 5 is not the answer. The final answer is going to be, again, remember, x and y are 0, and z is going to be 5. So the final answer is going to be 0, 0, 5. I hope this makes sense.